chill stream. No detractor memes, bathroom breaks, playing WWE, relaxing chill session of Street Fighter 3. Like a damn my vibe back from 2017. Jill Murray spends his whole day talking about Phil. When life deals lemons, you guys are here to drink the lemonade with me. Yo, what up? It's your boy. Whoo! <laughs> today, today was a hectic day. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like, if this detractor stuff was a Marvel movie, right now we're kind of in like a really great value version of the Civil War. <laughs> So yeah, if you guys kind of know of that drama, we're going to like finish it up tomorrow on the live stream before Phil. So yeah, tune in for that. That should be fun in the big social club. But today in today's video, our boy Philin, <laughs> Philium Burnell II, dude, he sits here and acts like a Karen once again about DoorDash and their delivery drivers and you know... <laughs> it's just funny dude phil expects every company on earth to bend to his whim you know and if they the second they step out of line bro fewer phil is gonna hop on that ass so yeah let's jump into it it's funny remember to like subscribe comment all that stupid stuff let's jump into it okay so ladies and gentlemen yesterday was my day off and as I had told you guys a couple days ago, it was going to be a hectic day. So yesterday on my day off, I had multiple appointments, okay, lined up all for this one particular day. The way that it worked was we actually had to, to start like hurrying. Like we got up in the morning and we immediately needed to like get start getting ready. You know, I needed to get food and my wife, you know, getting ready for the day out and everything. So basically the way we planned it was thus. The night before, we decided, let's order food, let's have it get delivered, just a couple sandwiches, nothing special, right? Just something quick. Let's have these sandwiches delivered relatively early, like right before 11 a.m. And yeah, that's early for a sandwich, but you know, what are you going to do? So we're going to eat, and then my wife will get ready, we'll head right out the door. We got our first appointment, but we have to drive to get there. It's like a 45-minute drive, so we got to drive to get there. And then after that, we have another follow-up appointment, we got to do another one there. And then after that, then we got to go grocery shopping. Bro, I am so sick of Phil. Every week, he literally says this on his day off. I had multiple appointments, Snort. Literally, his multiple appointments is why he missed his FedEx shipment, bro. And he had to turn a whole stream into waiting for FedEx. <laughs> Get out of here. What kind of appointments does a guy like Phil have? Really think about it. You know damn sure he isn't going to the dentist. He isn't going to the doctor for a physical. Like, you know, what? What? You know they're not having a baby. Like, what kind of appointments does a man like Phil Brunel have, bro? <laughs> He's acting like he has an interview with Forbes at like 9 p.m. Or like 9 a.m. <laughs> And then he's going to be on Good Morning America at 11. Get out of my face. I'm sorry. Oh, I hate when he says I had, mul I had multiple appointments. <laughs> oh. Home unpack it. And then when that's done, then finally we'd start having our, our day out together. And this is what I, I tell you guys when I emphasize when you only have one day off a week, it really is stressful sometimes. Because this is the day where my wife and I just want to sit around and relax together or maybe go out and do fun stuff together. Bro, Kat works three days a week. Literally, she works three days a week, dude. And Phil can set his hours whenever he wants. He chooses this life. <laughs> he chose the way of the beggar, bro. Get out of here, dog. <laughs> he makes everything sound like some monumental task in a sob story, dude. At home, unpack it. And then when that's done, then finally we'd start having our our day out together. And this is what I, I tell you guys when I emphasize when you only have one day off a week, it really is stressful sometimes. 
Because this is the day where my wife and I just want to sit around and relax together or maybe go out and do fun stuff together. Bro, Kat works three days a week. Literally, she works three days a week, dude. And Phil can set his hours whenever he wants. He chooses this life. <laughs> He chose the way of the beggar, bro. Get out of here, dog. <laughs> he makes everything sound like some monumental task in a sob story, dude. Like, well, this is the only day we got off, so we got to do this and this and this and this and this first. And then we can finally get to doing something considered, you know, day off, you know, stuff. So, here's what happened. We order the food and it's supposed to arrive around like 10, 1040-ish a.m., so we can eat and then, you know, get ready. It's like 5 before 1040. And we're looking. Nothing has happened. The order has not been acknowledged by the restaurant. No one is going to pick up the order. It's just sitting there. Oh, my God. So we're like, of all the days for this to happen, it has to happen on the day when we're in a hurry. We have appointments we have to make. So I end up calling. Well, I take that back. I end up co contacting customer service for the delivery service and they're like we don't know what's going on either let let us call the, the restaurant so they and by the way this is a restaurant we've ordered from many times before we have never had an issue with this restaurant so we don't know what's going on and this shows you how much of an entitled little prince dsp is okay he's trying to order a sandwich from a sandwich shop which normally isn't open until 11. i were i'm a chef dude Okay, commonly, like, restaurants that serve sandwiches and stuff like that don't open until, like, 10 or 11 a.m., dude. My restaurant normally opens at 10 a.m., dude. You know what I'm saying? So, think about it. He's trying to expect the sandwich when the chefs are still opening. There's no drivers really, like, looking out for food orders. And then here comes Phil. Everybody needs to drop everything for this pudgy asshole. Oh, my God. He's such a pompous ass, dude. He's so horrible <laughs> to the service industry. I'm so glad he's he, he will never step into my restaurant. I literally, bro, they would have to restrain me. Call the restaurant. And... You know, I, I'm on hold for like five, ten minutes, and then I get they get back like, okay, so the restaurant claims they're having some technical difficulties today. However, don't worry. They're making your order. It'll be done shortly, and then they're going to get it on its way to you. So you should see an update soon, you know, in the app to show that, you know, someone's coming to get your order, and then it's on the way, and then you can start tracking it. I'm like, all right, you say so. Why are you trying to order food? as you're trying to leave the house why can't you make yourself food and then order something when you get home if you're really feeling like you need something you need that sandwich that bad philip what the hell bro use your common sense he's trying to a order from a restaurant that's barely opening right bro i've done this i'm not gonna lie i've done this I straight up rejected DoorDash and Uber Eats orders because A, I was about to close and we're all trying to just close and get out. Or B, you like are trying to order like as we're still drinking our mortar morning coffee. Get out of here, Phil. You're not the king of the world. <laughs> oh my God, he's so disgusting. This is when he actually does earth the soul of my being. God damn, he's such an asshole towards, like, the service industry, bro. You could tell this pompous little bitch never had to work a hard day in his life. Never had to do service. Never had to cook his own meals. Ever. Ever, ever. He's just a man baby king with a paper Burger King crown, dog. Contacting the customer support again, and they're like, all right, at this point... We don't even want to contact the store again. They already lied to us once, obviously. So we're just going to, you know, cancel your problem or cancel your problem, cancel your order and give you a refund. Like, well, that sucks. That doesn't really solve the food problem. But obviously, I'd rather get my money back than get screwed over here. Who knows what's going on at this restaurant? All right. So I said, OK, yeah, let's do that. So they said, OK, we're going to cancel your order, give you a refund. They cancel it. And then it says the refund amount is $10 less than what I paid. 
And I said, what? Like, you're, what is that? So then the agent says, oh, don't worry. As a special courtesy for your inconvenience, we're going to go above and beyond in this situation. We're going to give you an additional $10 credit. So that way you have bonus money to spend on your next order with us. Bro, Phil has to be lying, bro. Do you guys really believe that he got in touch with customer support over the phone for two little sandwiches? <laughs> no way. I'm trying to tell you, this has happened to me so many times, okay? I've ordered some food and then the order gets dropped, you know, because the delivery driver doesn't want to pick it up for some reason or you know sometimes my food gets lost and all i do is click a few buttons and uber eats or doordash just gives me a refund phil's making this sound like the greatest journey in human history over two sandwiches okay and then it said here's your tent and i looked i was like but now it's the amount that it was supposed to be for the full refund so I went back to the agent. I'm like, let me get this straight. You're going to give me a full refund and you're going to give me a $10 credit. Yes. So the full amount was this. The $10 credit is this. So you should be giving me this, but you gave me $10 less. And then they were quiet. And then all of a sudden they go, well, that's because there's non-refundable taxes and fees. And I was like, what are you talking about? There's a non-refundable taxes and fees if I willingly chose to cancel my order because I felt like I didn't want the food anymore. You can't charge a customer taxes and fees for an order that was not fulfilled. This is on the restaurant side, not mine. And it's on your service to take that hit, not the customer. Like that's actually illegal. You can't charge a customer for something that didn't happen, right? It'd be one thing if I ordered the food and halfway through the order, I canceled myself. Then there's a non-refundable fee because you made the restaurant make the food. You made everyone in, in, get in, involved, get get working on an order for something that didn't happen. You can't just do that to the customer. That's actually illegal. It, it violates law. Well, I mean, that makes sense. He got a full refund for the meal, bro. He got a full refund for the meal, but he's going to sit here because what? The state still got their piece. Isn't that what got Phil in trouble in the first place, bro? Moving to Washington, thinking he didn't have to pay literally no taxes. Not federal, not state, city, no taxes at all. Like, he's the last person to be sitting here like going, What? Huh? <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, bro. This is how you know Phil's a Karen, right? You order food, right? You don't get the food for whatever reason, but you get the refund. But someone promised you a $10 voucher, but they didn't give it to you. But you got the full refund for your food. And you're still going to literally act like a Karen about it. You can't do that. So I don't know what you're saying, but you obviously you don't even understand how this works. So, you know, what are you going to refund me? And they were like, well, we're, we're going to give you the, the full price and the 10. I was like, but that's not what you're giving me. Look what you gave me. Like, what are you saying? Like, you told me one thing and you're doing another. That's completely dishonest. So just, you know, like, okay, well, let us reword it then. We're just going to give you the full refund for your order and that's it. And I was like, okay. I mean, that's all I was asking for. I wasn't asking for anything extra. You're the one saying you were going to give me something extra. So here's the funny part about all of this. I know why this happened. If you guys aren't aware, any person who works in one of these customer support jobs, their performance is graded by a post, uh, a post call or post contact survey. When you fill out that survey, you're supposed to tell that company how well they did. And based on those ratings, that actually can determine how those people get rated at their job, if they keep their job, if they get a raise, you know, all that is actually based on their overall feedback, okay? So what I think this person was doing, which is pretty damned underhanded, they, whenever there was an issue with the customer's order, they would tell the customer, 
I'm going to give you an extra refund on top of it to, as a way to make the customer feel like this customer service agent was going above and beyond. Therefore, the customer would think, oh, they did me a solid. I'm going to give them a great rating. Or I'm going to go to the survey and give them all fives or all tens or whatever the highest rating is. In reality, this person was a dishonest scumbag. This person was lying to the customer saying, I'm going to give you extra. And all they would do is refund your order minus $10 and then give you the 10 back that you were already owed and act like they did it out of their kindness of their own heart to help you. There is absolutely no way a business can charge you for a service never performed. <laughs> I swear, Phil's such a little girl when he doesn't get his way. Literally, you don't give Phil enough money, he cries. The DoorDash delivery man honestly gets lost or can't enter the condo compound walls, he cries. <laughs> he, he purposely orders too early at a restaurant where... You know, it kerfuffles the whole system and he can't get his food on time. He cries. <laughs> he gets a full refund, but he's expecting extra cash for taxes and shit. Bro, it's the government, Phil. Okay? As soon as the government gets their hands on a single penny, it's not yours anymore. Period. You should know this. You went through a bankruptcy. <laughs> He's so insane! He's insane! That's why he's so funny sometimes! <laughs> oh my god, bro! This guy never had to work a single honest day in his life, and it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. I need to catch some sleep. I'm actually recording this before I go to work, but I'm gonna upload it, like, as I'm going to work. <laughs> So I'm legitly tired as hell right now, guys. But yeah, oh, Phil gave me a legit good chuckle. I hope you guys found some chuckles too. I'll catch you guys in the live stream tomorrow. The Friday Night Bacon Social Club, baby. Can't wait to get lit and just hang out with you guys. But until then, hope you guys like, subscribe, comment, all that good fun stuff. All the stuff the, the YouTubers say. I'll catch you guys in the next video, my friends. Peace. Everything was right. Everything was right. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. Everything was right. Everything was right. I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. Oh, the camera's out. I don't even know. I need your help and support. Pledge to pay.